Cystoscopy is a very common procedure. Here you're going to see an endoscopic procedure called cystoscopy being done. We're going now through the urethra with a small camera attached to the scope. Now we're looking at the penile urethra in a male. And as I advance inside, I go to the bulbous urethra. And you see all these little rings. These are, these are strictures. Sometimes these can be very narrow and you won't be able to get your scope in. In which case you would need what you call a urethrotomy. Now we're coming to the sphincter and this is what controls the urinary flow so you don't leak and here in the prostatic urethra you see the prostate lobes on either side coming towards the middle and here you have part of the middle lobe pushing from the bottom up and some patients have a much larger middle lobe here you're inside the bladder you're looking at a moderate amount of trabeculation where the muscles underneath the bladder lining get hypertrophied or enlarged to get the pressure in the bladder up to overcome the obstruction. I'm looking here for the ureteral orifice. There you see one and here you see the other side. This is where the ureter brings the urine from the, or the urine comes out of the ureter into the bladder. It looks like a semicircular opening into the bladder. Here again you're looking at the back wall of the bladder. I'm coming back towards the right ureteral orifice, back to the left back to the inside of the bladder. Here I am going through the urethra again. On the way back, I look at the prostate here again. It's blocked. That's the Vero, or Vero Montanum. Now I'm the prostatic urethra, and now the bulbous urethra coming back outside through the penile urethra, and I get the scope outside. Here's another cystoscopy procedure going through the urethra. It's a little fuzzy here, but uh, again, you get the image. Yeah, now it's sharper. Going through the penile and bulbous urethra. Going towards the sphincter. There it is. That's the prostatic urethra here. And in this patient, the blockage is not as severe as the last patient. But again, you do see where the blockage is coming from the bottom up. So we call that a high-riding posterior urethra that can also cause similar symptoms of difficulty urinating. And depending, these patients always end up having a transrectal ultrasound to, to check the prostate volume. And depending on the volume of the prostate, I decide if they need a uh, transurethral needle ablation if they are under 30 grams. And if they're over 30 grams, I use uh, microwave therapy to shrink the prostate. Some doctors may advise you to have a laser procedure, which is okay as well. And occasionally, uh, some of these patients end up needing a TURP, which is like a transurethral, it's called the transurethral resection of the prostate. Now inside the bladder, this patient has even what we call a higher grade of trabeculation, where the uh, crisscross fibers of the muscles are a little more severe compared to the last one. I would call this a grade 3 to 4 trabeculation. Here's the left ureteral or right ureteral orifice there. And I'm looking for the left ureteral orifice which will be right about there. Not very clearly seen on this patient.